Hey everybody, we're here to discuss the tax abatement changes in the city of Cincinnati from a residential perspective. I'm lucky enough to be here with Paul Yankee from Green Building Consulting. We're here to discuss the intricacies of what's changing. So I don't typically date our videos, but we're sitting mm. here in February of 2023. Nice. This is gonna be a short video just with the highlights of what's going on. But Paul, mm. give a quick little introduction of who you are, if it's okay. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks for having us. With Green Building Consulting, we're the high performance coaches for buildings and the building professionals who build them. So our job is to get these amazing builders and developers and even homeowners that have these great dreams to build a better house. We want to help them do it. You've been a, a big advocate of what's going on over here for decades now. And you're really, I'm dating you a little bit there. Thank Sorry. you. I appreciate um, that. Yeah. But I say that because of your just wealth and breadth of experience on this front. So what's changing and what's going on right now? Because I think there's a mm -hmm. fundamental shift of the tax abatement that's happening. Can you share what's really going on? Absolutely. Since now he's had the, the, uh, the pleasure of having an actual tax abatement for property taxes, mm -hmm. right, of investment in the city. They've had it now for 20 years. Mm -hmm. In 2007, it changed to where they started adding some uh, constituent uh, mm -hmm. goals like lead and sustainability, which was great. Mm -hmm. And then that's evolved. Since 2007, though, this is probably the biggest change. Yes. Um, this change, uh, what they're going to do is they're going to move it. And we knew this was coming. This was something that was really a targeted event for the last couple of years. And it's taken a while. They want to move it to neighborhood by neighborhood, different tiers that target the different development goals of each mm -hmm. neighborhood more like a scalpel instead of a machete. That is the right goal. That's yes. absolutely the right goal. It's harder though. Yeah. It's harder to get right, a lot more variables. You guys have been working on this for quite a while. Yes. And it's still, we should preface this as well, this isn't finished yet. It's Close. not. Close. Not. That's it's weeks away. That's one of the first questions that we'll get like, oh my gosh, did I miss this change? Um, it's still in. So it has been presented mm -hmm. uh, at city council. It is going through uh, another round of kind of, you know, little tiny tweaks, but the shape and size of it's probably set. So yeah. it's 95% it's of the way yeah, there right now. I think so. So again, we're sitting here in February. When do you think this new set of policy changes to the, uh, I shouldn't say policy changes, the changes mm -hmm. to the tax amendment will sure. take place? What's the official date that they're looking at right now? The hope is that they would be able to vote it into existence in the next couple weeks. It could take a little longer if there are some other uh, ideas that float up that were good mm -hmm. ideas, which I've already heard some good ones recently. But the goal for actually taking effect wouldn't be until September 1st. September 1st. So we have plenty of time for people to get in and, and get things done. The magic trigger, if you will, and this is a little different than the last time, but uh, similar they've done in the past, is uh, application, so permit application. So for those that want to build right in the city, they just have to get the drawings done mm -hmm. right to the set that you would be handing those into the city. Yes. Hand them into the city. That's your trigger. It's like doing your taxes on yes. April 15th, okay. right? Just get them in. They don't have to be right, yep. right? But they do have mm -hmm. to be in and, and substantially done. Okay. So if you are a builder or you're a client that's going to build a house, yeah. you have your plans, you need your hand plans finished up and you need to submit a permit application to the city. And once they've accepted yeah. the permit, not actually give it the stamp of this is being approved, but once mm -hmm. they've actually accepted the permit itself, that means you're anchored in that's to right. the pre-2023 tax abatement changes, which is essentially what September What we have currently. Is. That's right. Yes. Though, so one other date though is, let's say uh, you're a builder and or a developer and you're you've got a number of homes that, mm -hmm. that you think you're doing. And yeah, you can get in the plans right prior to September 1st, but I'm not gonna start on, let's say six homes that I was mm -hmm. gonna do in this section. I'm not gonna start on all six like tomorrow. Correct. So you do have one year. This is the current rules. Now this may change. This, this might key. be something that's gonna be moving around a little bit, but right now you would have one year that you have to start construction. Okay. All right, so for anything you put in, in permit. But that's, that's a big discussion with some big developments right now. Okay. And, and that is a big deal. I mean, just obviously, and you should, if you have a builder, if you're a client out there working with your builder, make sure they know this. Make sure they're calling Paul, to be honest yeah. with you, to make sure they understand it. Get your permit in by September 1. You're in good shape as mm -hmm. long as it's an accepted permit as far that's as right. that goes. Then you, do, you decide to start building in the spring of 2024. You are good. You're not having to worry about it. Based on what they presented what? as of today. As of today. February 8th. <laughs> that's right. Right now. Everything's so, very timed. Yeah. It, so we're sitting here February 8th. It, by March, April, these mm -hmm. changes should be solidified, finished Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Um, voted on? Are they voted on? Yes. yes. They'll be voted on in council. Okay. Voted on by council and then approved. And then September 1, they go into action. Mm -hmm. So if you look at some different areas, you know, top tier, mid tier, low tier. I'd explain the differences between the three just so people sure. can understand that. Um, they put them into a three tier kind of category. So they took essentially, I think it's 52 neighborhoods, um, but they took the, the all the neighborhoods of the city and put those into three tiers. It's called lift. Okay. Expand and sustain. Okay. Um, the the lift neighborhood is essentially most of those rules. Just think, 
most of the incentive is going to be pretty darn close to what we have now right. for the whole city. They wanted to keep that as high as they could. This mm -hmm. is honestly of the 52 neighborhoods. I believe it's around 40 of the neighborhoods. Yes. So this is most of the city that still needs work to be done. They still want to drive as mm -hmm. max incentive they can and max development they can. Okay. Uh, second one is the expand. Uh, so these neighborhoods, which I think there's around 10, I feel like. Pleasant Ridge, mm -hmm. um, it's downtown, OTR, Pendleton, okay. um, Madisonville. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you have areas that range from some section of the neighborhood is really done and others are still not all the yes, way there yeah. to some that are mm -hmm. really rolling along. It's ones that still need some work and they still know that, mm -hmm. but it's a I say it's almost like a mixed bag of they're not all the way there and they need some help, but they, they've got some momentum going. I see. The, um, top, the top tier, which is? It's called sustain. Sustain. Those neighborhoods can sustain, right, their, right. their quality of uh, development and quality of building. So a lot of rehab you know, mm -hmm. advantages, things like that. But the new construction part is drastically reduced. Correct, correct. Even right. the opportunities have. So that's areas like High Park and Mount Lookout. Oakley, those sorts of areas as far That's as right. that goes. So, and, and obviously we're talking about two different things, right? We're talking about there's new construction um, mm -hmm. from a lead and a non-lead standpoint, and then right. there's renovations from a lead and a non-lead standpoint. Exactly and right. there's a, about a dozen other little intricacies in there. So we're not going to get right. into all of those. Yeah. The biggest thing is, is if you're considering a build, make sure you're talking to folks that understand what's going on. That's right. Um, you're probably safe for a few months, but we just said this out there. Is, Things are changing fast, and September is going to be here before we know. It will. Is there any any little things that we should leave um, with any of the viewers right now? Um, and, and let's assume that most folks are consumers. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. what, what should they be thinking of as they they click off this video and they move on with their home search? Yeah, I would say number one is timing. Like like I said, it's going to go fast. Uh, if you're in that design process, you're looking for either looking for lots, doing design, or design sometimes, and then yes. you're going through that. Now is the time you really do want to be thinking this through. Mm -hmm knowing what may or may not be coming because September 1 will become fast. Yes. And in that conversation with your architect and your builder is, is key to move on a certain pace because you've got to get your plans in before then. Uh, it could be substantial, somewhere between one third to two thirds of the incentive yes. right, could, could go away. So depending on that neighborhood. The other big thing is if you have been eyeing some up and coming kind of development that you're seeing, I would say uh, talk to that builder, that developer as yeah. well. Like, this is good. You're out shopping, right, for this thing. You're very interested in it. Go ask them. They're already probably having conversations around mm -hmm. potentially grandfathering these bigger developments, Absolutely. right, that yes. might be doing 30 to 50 homes somewhere, and it's going to happen in over four or five years. See what's going on. Mm -hmm. They're, they're going to be the best place to start uh, yeah. and see what's, what's happening with your neighborhood. So as they're getting into it, they just need to understand exactly what's happening, know that the shift is coming, know that the change is happening, and then just yeah. be mindful of it with timing of everything else. Absolutely. And then stay tuned for the next video. We'll do whenever yeah. it passes, because that's why we're not putting numbers in here, because <laughs> heck, from the one I had three weeks ago, it's already changed a few <laughs> ways. Right. So we're not putting numbers of exact details in here, but stay tuned because we'll interview you in a longer 20, 30 minute fashion yeah. to really get the details of this so you can understand and make good decisions. We appreciate you spending the time. Hey, well, thank, thank you, you as usual. Appreciate it. So we appreciate it. And if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to myself or Paul yeah. at Green Building Consulting. Thanks, y'all. Thank you.